if you can answer the questions truthfully and we can move forward. Can we do that? I don't recall. All right. Detectives thought his brain was the size of a squirrel brain. So you could just tell him anything, he gonna go for it. He's back. The witness in the Young Thug Rico trial, whose testimony already went viral, Kenneth Copeland, a.k.a. Lil Woody, is back in the hot seat in Atlanta. And his antics and passion, they are on full display. We are breaking down the top 10 moments in Lil Woody's testimony in front of a brand new judge as the Young Thug trial tries to get going once again. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. It's been a minute since we've talked about the RICO case against Jeffrey Lamar Williams, also known as rapper Young Thug, and several co-defendants out in Atlanta, Georgia. This, of course, is the trial that had been on pause while the court worked out some things behind the scenes, like, you know, the original judge having to recuse himself, working out motions to dismiss the case, to get the prosecutors thrown off the case. It has been something to watch. In fact, the jurors in this case, they haven't heard testimony since June. But as you'll see, they're finally brought back in to hear the continuation of this case. Not an easy task for any jury to sit in a criminal trial. This one is something else. But having said that, we wanna get you caught up as quickly as possible on all of this because what is happening? The state's star witness seems to be once again causing trouble for the prosecution. Now, if you've been following this trial on the Law and Crime Network, you know that Judge Ural Glanville was removed from the case after overseeing it for more than a year. Attorneys for Mr. Williams and a co-defendant, Diamante Kendrick, filed motions asking for Fulton County to take Glanville off the trial after a very controversial in-chambers meeting happened between the judge and the prosecutors from the Fulton County District Attorney's Office and witness Kenneth Copeland, also known as Lou Woody. And this is called an ex parte meeting where the defense was not present. So it's a little bit complicated, but what's going on here, and this is kind of a simplified version, is that Copeland is one of the witnesses that the state wants to use to show that Williams is connected to acts that further the cause of his alleged gang, YSL, or Young Slime Life, this racketeering enterprise. Williams' attorneys say that this is just a record label, it's not a gang, there's nothing nefarious going on here. The prosecution is trying to prove that Williams was the head of this criminal organization that absolutely terrorized Atlanta. Copeland had been mentioned many times in prior testimony over the last several months, and he was seen speaking with police in an interrogation tape that leaked online. According to the prosecution, back in 2015, several of the YSL defendants were involved in the murder of Donovan Thomas, also known as Big Nut. This is an alleged rival gang member. Shannon Stilwell and Diamante Kendrick, two of Williams' co-defendants, they have been charged in connection with the shooting, and Williams himself is accused of renting a car that was used in the murder as well. Now, Copeland allegedly told police during an interrogation that Williams was involved, but now it seems he's trying to take all of that back. Copeland indicated to prosecutors that he didn't want to testify in this case, but he was given a type of immunity where he can't be charged for anything he admits to on the stand. In other words, what he says can't be used against him. But that also means he's not allowed to plead the fifth. You know, the Fifth Amendment, the right against self-incrimination, because it's already protected. It's already guaranteed under this immunity agreement, so he can't plead the Fifth. That's not an option for him. But of course, when he gets on the stand and he pleads the Fifth, he's held in contempt and he's jailed. So this ex parte meeting in Judge Glanville's chambers involved the state telling Copeland that if he didn't testify, he would have to sit in jail for possibly not only this whole trial, but through the trials of all of the co-defendants whose cases were severed from this trial. That could mean a very, very long time, but as you'll see, that may have been a mistake to tell him that. Anyway, the defense found out about this ex parte meeting. They were not happy. There was a lot of drama in court where Glanville and Williams attorney Brian Steele, they argued back and forth. That led to multiple requests for recusal. The trial was paused. Glanville had originally refused to recuse himself, so the attorneys tried to take this motion up to the Georgia Supreme Court. They declined to consider it, but handed it over to Fulton County Judge Rachel Krause to review. And in her response, 
Judge Krauss wrote, quote, This court has no doubt that Judge Glanville can and would continue presiding fairly over this matter if the recusal motions were denied, but the necessity of preserving the public's confidence in the judicial system weighs in favor of excusing Judge Glanville from further handling of this case. So Glanville was taken off the case. Now a new judge has been assigned, Judge Paige Reese Whitaker. Now, despite the fact that we have a new judge, you know it's still the same? Copeland's antics. Because let's talk about what happened in court last week and what happened in court on Monday. So, Copeland appeared last week in front of Judge Whitaker and the defendants and the lawyers as the court tried to parse out what the jury should and shouldn't keep in mind from Copeland's prior testimony. You see, Judge Whitaker ruled that it was improper to tell Copeland that he could be locked up until the conclusion of all the defendants' trials, so his prior testimony, in a way, may be tainted. Now, if he's going to testify again, this changes the whole game. So the judge decided on giving the jury a very special instruction about what Copeland said all those weeks ago. There's this chunk of testimony from a couple of days that y'all need to ignore entirely, disregard entirely, don't give it any consideration. Um, What I propose to do in addition to instructing them on that is to then do some version of... and. Ms. Persfield found a case that was pretty recent where a court had done this when they were having to say, uh, ignore all that evidence, disregard it. They actually kind of said, and if there is anybody who thinks they can't, let me know. And I would propose to do that whenever I give this instruction. So that if there are jurors who are like, no, man, I just cannot do that. Once I hear it, I can't unhear it. Then we can know that. We could excuse those jurors, and I mean, I guess if it's eight jurors that say that, then we might have a mistrial, but um, better to go ahead and figure out from the outset, as far as I'm concerned, can you do that? Instead of just being left with, oh, they're presumed to do it. Now, the judge brought Kenneth Copeland into the courtroom. Again, the jury's not here yet. They were going to come back the following week to see if he was going to cooperate this time around. So let me, Young, I'm telling you to your face, you just said it. Something about it, they can lock me up in line. I'm telling you to your face, this is all I do. And you're telling me that they can lock me up if I lie. But if, they, if I sit here and testify, so the E way going to go to jail. No, not with regard to anything that you might testify to that might otherwise admit to a crime or admit to your involvement in a crime. That's what the immunity order does. And I'm sure Mr. Melnick has explained this to you, and I know I've explained it previously, but none of that is gonna result in you being put in jail because they cannot use that evidence against you to prove any of those crimes that you might incriminate yourself about. So are you going to testify or not? Do you want to talk to Mr. Melnick again? No? Okay. All right. Okay. He basically said, I'll see how I feel when I wake up Monday morning. That's going to be my decision to testify. This guy's a character, let me tell you. After being in limbo for weeks, this same jury that maybe hopefully wasn't reading what was been happening around the scenes or behind the scenes in this case, who knows what they're thinking about what's going on, they are finally brought back in. This is the jury that's been there the whole time. They're brought back into the courtroom on Monday, and they are introduced to a brand new judge. My name is Judge Paige Reese Whitaker. Judge Earl Glanville is no longer the judge presiding over this case. I will be the presiding judge in this case moving forward, and you are not to concern yourselves with this change. Let me remind you, as I assume the presiding duties in this case, that none of my decisions and nothing that I say during the trial is evidence, just like none of Judge Glanville's decisions and nothing Judge Glanville said during the trial is evidence. The decisions and remarks of a judge do not mean that the judge favors or leans to one side or another in this case. By the way, one of the reasons that Whitaker said that is because she said last week it was inappropriate, basically, she was calling out Judge Glanville, to make comments about the attorneys in front of the jury, like reportedly calling Brian Steele 
unprepared. The jurors, they also indicated that they could disregard some of Kenneth Copeland's prior testimony too. And just like that, we are back in trial. And remember, these jurors haven't heard testimony for months. But here we are, Deputy District Attorney Simone Hilton back again questioning Kenneth Copeland. And to say he is reluctant to testify would be an understatement. Good, good morning. Mr. Copeland, do you know a person by the name of Shell Cal? I don't recall. Are you saying you don't recall if you know someone by the name of Shell Cal? Sustain. Do you recall speaking with law enforcement about an individual that you know by the name of Shell Cal? I don't recall. Pretty similar to what we saw from Copeland the first time around, but he quickly got frustrated with ADA Hilton and the questioning overall. I made things up. I told you this before y'all brought me in this courtroom. And I'm telling you now, you ask me about 2015, I have got my life together. Y'all trying to put this on my conscience. Y'all trying to put people's life in my hands. I don't lie on people. I don't want to be here. Y'all have pressured me. I'm tired of y'all because y'all know y'all are wrong. And y'all black people doing this to us. And I understand that. Leave me alone. Let me leave. Man, y'all pissing me off. Listen, I don't recall nothing I said to no police. Stop asking me these questions. Okay. I'm telling you, I don't recall. I understand, but we're going to have to get through the questions. You can just continue to say you don't recall if that's what it is. That's what you want me to say? I want you to hey, answer the question. for just a minute. I don't think that you were instructing him how to testify. I hope not. Oh, I don't instruct not. him how to testify other than truthfully. Look, kind of hard to know how credible Copeland is, right, when he's admitting that he hasn't been truthful in the past. According to him, when Atlanta police brought him in for questioning nearly 10 years ago, he was scared that he was going to be arrested for something. So he claims he told the officers whatever they needed to hear, whatever they wanted to hear, which included putting the blame on Williams. Okay, so this will happen. Okay. The police kept locking me up for whatever they could. Every time I can't do the police was on me and they keep bringing up third name. So what I did was to get them off of me, I said third did this, third did that, third did, because I knew they would never, I knew he didn't do it. And they, I, in my mind, I knew that the police would never go mess with him. So it was easy for me to try to throw the blame off on him to get them off of me. And that's what I was doing from all these years. I don't remember what I don't told them in the past, but my whole motive was Doug did it because I knew he didn't do it and they couldn't lock him up. And they keep talking about it, thug, 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 thug. So guess what I'm gonna tell them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what else you want me to tell them? Yeah, he killed this person. Yeah, he did that. That's what I that's what I'm gonna do. And that's right now. If you tell if I walk out of this thing and they, and, and they say the police stop me now. Hey man, give me something about the I'm about to make something up about him again. On January 11, 2015, when you went to speak to the police, when they called you, did they ask you about Thug or did they ask you about the murder of Donovan Thomas? I don't know. I don't, re I don't remember. Did you go down to the police department on your own to tell them that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? Uh, did I go on my own? Did you walk into the police department by yourself? to tell them on the morning of January 11, 2015, that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? I don't recall. Okay. So you don't recall going to the police or you don't recall why? I don't you recall went? none of that. Right. I just know that every time the police was after me, trying to get me, they kept bringing his name up. And I knew that they had me what I had. So I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever y'all want me to say, I was see it. And that's what I told Gaither and Dennis. And that's why they kept coming after me because they felt like, okay, they can make a case out to him or whatever they trying to do. So they knew that, okay, we going to get Woody today. He going to have something to say about the, and it's wrong. And y'all are wrong because y'all know that I'm full of And y'all keep trying to drag me in here to bring up that y'all know I don't say it. Why is y'all doing it? Leave me alone. Was if y'all going to charge me for what I did, I don't did the time for the crimes y'all caught me for. I have to say, if you're just listening 
to this episode on our podcast and not watching it on YouTube, I'm sorry, but you were really missing out on some visuals here. Copeland, visibly irritated. His facial expressions are so expressive, by the way. Such a unique witness. Anyway, Copeland at times called out the detectives too, who questioned him about Williams, even saying this. Detectives thought his brain was the size of a squirrel brain. So you could just tell him anything, he gonna go for it. So at this point, Prosecutor Hilton asked to treat Copeland as a hostile witness and the judge allowed it. That means Hilton can change up her style of questioning. Almost seems like a cross-examination of Copeland, even though he is their witness. He's a witness for the state. Courts allow this when a witness is being openly obstinate or might be lying. And what's your new version? What's your, what's your truth today? That I lied. And that you lied about everything back in 2015? My truth today is I lied and put the blame on others for a lot of activities. I ain't telling on myself. I, I ain't got nothing else to say. I don't recall. Okay. Now, you keep saying that you told Detective Thorpe whatever it is that you wanted to say. Um, it's that, good. I'm that just... you were finessing him. Correct. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe, I'm not trying to go to jail I'm not trying to do any of that. I don't want none of this. Me and Nut ain't never had a problem. And I still ain't trying to go to jail. Okay. So why would you be lying to Detective Thorpe if you did not want to go to jail? Can you say that? Why would I be lying to him if I didn't want to go to jail? Correct. What you mean? Like you keep saying that you were just lying, lying, lying. Why would you lie versus just telling him the truth? That's how I was raised. I was raised up to lie to the police. I was At an early age, I was taught to lie to the police. But if you're trying not to go to jail, why would you lie to the police versus telling them the truth? You're trying to trick me? I'm, I'm asking you a question. I'm not going to confess. Confess to what? Nothing. Did you kill Donovan Thomas? You shaking your head? Is that a no? No. Okay, then. And is that what you went down there to tell Detective Thorpe back on January 11, 2015? What? Is that what you went down there to tell Detective Thorpe that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? I don't understand. I don't know if this is a trick question. When you went down there, did you go down there to tell Detective Thorpe where you were the entire day and that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? Melanie, can I answer that? Yeah, you need to answer that. I don't know how to answer You're, that. Do you need to talk to Mr. Melnick? No, I don't, to, I don't know if it's a trick question that she asked me. Now, to be clear, Copeland is now insisting that he didn't know who killed Thomas, but he would say anything to anyone. And he says he wasn't snitching. In January of 2015, when you were, when police were calling you about Donovan Thomas's murder. After, after he was killed, after. I wasn't around through it that much for him to be a, able to see me answer the phone or talk to any police or anything. What you talking about? Do you, did you tell the police when they were asking you about Thug thinking you were snitching, you told the police, because like every time he called, it's like I was right there in front of him and I had walked up. I was like, that was the detective. Like, shit, they trying to find out who. And he just felt like I was just making, making stuff up because I always stutter. So when you snitching, snitching is based off the truth and off facts. Lying and, and trying to finish your ways is different things. So there wasn't never the case with, there would never be the case if he concerned about me snitching up. So you only snitching if you telling the police the truth. And back in 2015, where you, when they were calling you and they were asking you about Nut's murder, were you telling them that you were not involved in Nut's murder? I was telling them everybody, I told them everybody did. I told them she kill, killed them. I told them all type of people did. I didn't know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Having said that, at one point, Copeland did seemingly admit to a shooting involving another Atlanta rapper known as Rich Homie Quan. The rapper's father was injured when shots were fired into an Atlanta barbershop he owned. 
And Copeland says he had been trying to protect a friend who he calls threat from being questioned in connection with that shooting. Threat is now deceased, by the way. And before he said what happened, he confirmed with his attorney, I have immunity, right? Do you recall telling the, the, the investigators that at the Cascade skating ring, you confronted Kel about them shooting at you all from the bushes? What happened in Nut got nothing to do with YSL. This is the screaming uh, language. This, it got everything to do with threat. You know what I mean? I was trying to protect threat from the get-go. You know what I mean? Threat, threat, and they had some more stuff going on. Like, Was threat at the gambling house when it got shot up by Kel? Yeah, you, know, you said nothing I said can be used against me. That's right. Me and threat shot up Rich Homie Corn Daddy Barber Shop on Bankhead. I don't know what happened with threat and Rich Homie Corn, but I'm going to ride with my brother. And... They was beefing, and yeah, we pulled up and did that. Okay. And as a result of, why did you and Threat shoot up Rich Homie Quan Daddy's barber shop? Because I'm a ride with Threat. Okay. Did Threat tell you why he was shooting? I don't ask no question. I just say let go. Okay. And when Rich Homie Quan's barber shop was shot up was that in september of 2014 do you I, remember i don't know when i know we went up there and shot it up okay was it before nut was killed yes do you remember what happened the day that you and threat shot up rich homie kwan's daddy's barber shop what you mean but do you remember that day? What what led up to you going to the barber shop and shooting it up? I told him they go do it. What led up to you saying let's go do it? Why? Threat was mad. He was like he f-ing keep scaring my language. He he was talking, playing like like we somebody to play with, and I was ready. I had them choppers on deck. Now, did this shooting of Rich Homie Quan's daddy's barber shop? Start the beef between If Gang and YSL. The beef was never between If Gang and YSL. Okay. The beef was between me, Threat, and Shell Kill. Rich on the corn. Because they were trying, Shell Kill was trying to ride Rich Homie Coin. The streets do why sell into what me and Threat had going on. Well, that takes me back to the shooting at Lakewood, right? Can you repeat that? Sure. You just said that the streets brought YSL into what you and Threat had going on, correct? That's what you just said? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that a yes for the record? Yes, yes, oh. my bad. So according to Copeland, there wasn't any sort of problem between him and YSL. That was just a rumor that had been going around. And he once again seemingly looked for reassurance that what he said on the stand cannot be used to come back to bite him. Remember, what he says can't be used to help prosecute him. He also tried very hard to watch his language. Nothing I say could be used in no courtroom? That is correct. Federal or state? Is that the parameters of the immunity or? Nothing can be used. Correct. And what your question was? When you and Shell Cal met at the Cascade Skating Ring, did the two of you shake hands and said that the beef was over when y'all met at the Cascade Skating Ring? I put a gun out on him. At the Cascade Skating Ring? At the Cascade Skating Ring. Okay. Well, who'd you pull it out on? Shell Kel. And once you pulled the gun out on Shell Kel, what happened? I had somebody with me that I didn't want to get caught up in my my, my shenanigans. Who was with you? I can't recall. Well, if somebody you just... Said... I can't remember who it was with me. Okay. So how do you know you didn't want them caught up in your shenanigans? Because I wouldn't feel to put nobody else in my 
I want it. I just wasn't gonna do that. Okay. So after you pulled the gun out on him, did you shake hands with him to say that the beef was over between the two of you? Nope. Okay. I pulled the gun out and let him know I could have got you right now. Okay. And you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. All right. While Kenneth Copeland is allegedly connected to some arguably shady dealings around Atlanta, you know what's not in doubt? His popularity on social media. That has skyrocketed since he first took the stand a couple of months ago. He actually went live on Instagram before he was called in the courtroom on Monday, just sitting there drinking from a water bottle. He also posted selfies in his gray three-piece suit. And there was a post as well featuring Christina Weaver. This is the court reporter when Judge Glanville was presiding over the trial. You may remember that they had a funny moment during his testimony in June. It, it never crossed my mind. So how were you able to tell Detective Gaither that Nut and Thug was cool? Because they're questioning me, and I'm trying to get them off of me, and she asked me questions about Nut and Thug, I guess, and I'm telling her whatever she... She asked me, let's say she asked me a question about this guy. I'm going to say, yeah, I seen this guy. It's blue. Whatever she asked me, I'm going to say, I'm going to agree to that. I'm going to say whatever she asked me. If she asked me about th th this reporter right here, I'm going to say, yep, she's sitting outside me with white sh tennis shoes on. I'm going to say something. Just because I want her to believe I'm telling the truth. Uh, that I, I want her to, to get me out of jail. Well, she has on white tennis shoes, don't she? Don't you got on white tennis shoes? She got on chucks. Right, and they white, right? What color your shoe is? Okay. She got on chucks. So you telling the truth? What color your shoes is? She said they white. Right, so you're telling the truth then? Well, it, it depends. See, you, you pick what you want to tell them. Such an interesting guy. Now, Copeland is going to come back on the stand. He's going to continue to be grilled by the prosecution. And we will plan on bringing you the very best moments right here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. That's all we have for you right now. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.